Welcome to Hardline. This is Phil again, and today I wanted to talk about uh, you know something that's not getting a whole lot of airplay in most of the news media at the moment. Uh, certain Telegram channels, if you're not familiar, Telegram is uh, an app for encrypted communication. Certain Telegram channels in Belarus have been shut down. Uh, if you're not familiar with the situation down there, uh, Alexander Lukashenko uh, recently won re-election, though, you know, that's hotly contested. A lot of people think that he stole the election. And uh, Lukashenko and his goons, a lot of the, you know, corrupt police officers and whatnot, and people who are involved in this, were being pointed out in some of these Belarusian uh, telegram channels. And Apple, the Apple Corporation, has taken it upon themselves uh, to supersede Telegram, the actual app where this communication is going on. And they've just completely uh, uh, sideswiped these channels. And, you know, this shouldn't be too much of a surprise for anybody who's following the, the story of the Hong Kong protests. You know, there were clear sides taken. Apple, once again, took the side of the, the you know, Chinese Communist uh, uh, Party, the CCP, uh, Apple's App Store, uh, McDonald's, Starbucks, uh, you know, the NBA, Disney. There's several corporations blatantly took sides. And, you know, one thing I find interesting is the fact that despite the fact that many of these Silicon Valley giant firms uh, aren't even allowed in China, aren't allowed past the Great Firewall of China. But for whatever reasons, I'm guessing money, because China is the emerging market. It's the, uh, you know, it's the fastest growing economy in the world. There's a lot of yuan to be made out there. There's a lot of renminbi to be made. And, you know, U.S. and other Western corporations are greedy. So, of course, they're going to jump on that. And, uh, and what's scary about that, though, is when, you know, uh, people who have uh, perhaps very, uh, very detrimental aims uh, are able to just use their money and influence to, you know, shut things down like this. And, uh, you know, uh, we've, of course, seen like uh, similar things going on in the past few days here in the U.S. I think I guess Jack Dorsey just apologized for uh, what went on with the New York Post Biden uh, story that that they completely, you know, both Facebook and Twitter did their best to, uh, uh, you know, uh, keep that story from being spread. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 really a scary thought because, you know, uh, a lot of people will argue, oh, they're social media companies, they're a private company, they can do what they want. The the issue with that is. You know, when they use their standing as a private corporation in order to circumvent the First Amendment, you know, to be able to say, oh, well, I'm a private corporation. I don't have to follow the First Amendment. Well, that's when you start having to think about, uh, you know, the Communications Decency Act, CDA 230, uh, because once once that starts happening, uh, you know, you, you've got these large, you know, multi-billion dollar firms that are now all of a sudden they have real power to shape the narrative as as much or more power than the actual mainstream media themselves. So, yeah, that's something to keep an eye on. And, uh, uh, you know, hoping hoping that the people of Belarus, by the way, can uh, shake off the oppression of uh, Alexander Lukashenko. And until next time, though, guys, this has been Hardline.